Hello, hello. I am still in Quartzsite. Do you believe that? And I am here with Daryl. She is living in a Subaru full time and she doesn't have a lot of the amenities, a bathroom, a toilet, a refrigerator, but you know what? She says she's happy. As you watch this video, some of you may be asking yourselves, how could a woman in her 70s possibly be happy living under these conditions? After all, she's living in a small SUV without the use of refrigeration, with no toilet. She has to cook for the most part outside in the elements. I think, however, as you watch the video, you'll gain a better understanding of why Daryl made the choices that she did. Living in an apartment each year, watching the rent go up, as she told me, she was just waiting to get evicted. And she decided she wanted to leave on her terms when she chose to, not when she was kicked out. Hello, Daryl. Hi. How's it going? Doing good. We have some wind noise, but we're going to be moving over and it's going to be getting better soon. But you are living at a long-term BLM land for the winter season in Quartzsite. Yes. And this is the way you are planning to do from now on to the foreseeable future. Spend the winter here and then the summer somewhere else? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. And do you want to show us what you're living in right now? Yeah. This is a 2008 Subaru Forester. Okay. Um, I bought it in 2008 with the idea of having something that I could live in if I needed to. Okay, so you're already thinking ahead at that point. Yes, yes. Okay. And what made you what made you think in those terms? Um, just the situation the world was in, I think, and the uncertainty. But you actually didn't start living in it until January of 2023. Correct. Okay. So why don't you show us exactly how you have it set up? Okay. Um, this is, it's in kind of night mode. Okay. This is where I sleep. I, I do fit. I'm 5'4". Okay. And um, I come right to the end. <laughs> okay. Um, then over here is my um, food. The first box is coffee, spices, stuff like that. Underneath is um, electronics like my fan, my uh, power cord if I'm at a place that has power. Okay. Um, and breakfast foods, dishes, um, and dinner foods. Now, and then my cookware I have out over let's there. Let's look by at your kitchen over here. So you have this, it's called a Kelty? Yes. A Kelty Backroads? Shelter. Shelter, okay. Yeah. And this is where you have it set up. And what do you do in here? This is where I cook. Um, I keep these little red caps in there so that I don't drive off or anything when I was cooking in the back of the okay, car okay. before I got this. I've okay. had this two weeks. Okay. Um, it's similar to one, it's a lot better than one I had um, before that the wind took out. <laughs> now you were saying you've had this for two weeks and you've been here since October? Yes. So now, what do you do as far as where do you stay? What kind of places do you stay at when you're not here? Do you boondock or what do you do? No, um, I try not to boondock. I like um, established campgrounds mm -hmm. that are um, kind of minimalist, but campgrounds that have restrooms and trash. Because Water is iffy. I have six gallons. But you don't have a restroom or toilet facilities in your van? No. Okay, no. or in your... I guess you call yeah, it an SUV. <laughs> there's not room for that in right. there, and so, it would be very awkward. Now, you were telling me you have the America the Beautiful Pass? Yes. Okay. And so what would you say your average nightly cost that you try and keep under per night for camping expenses? Um, I try to stay under $10 if I can, or at least averaged out over the month. Okay. And so you were saying, what's the lowest you've paid? $4. And the highest? Um... 26 I think okay but that's you were saying that's very unusual yes okay. yes um, that I think I paid that twice once was in um, Valley of Fire State Park 
and the other one um, was at a public utilities um, park. Okay. But you do tend to stay where you're able to average over the month about $10 a month or less. Ten dollars a night, yes. I mean, ten dollars a night. Sorry, that, that would be pretty cool. Ten dollars a month, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's almost that's better than here. <laughs> Although, unfortunately, here is going to go up to three hundred next season. What? They're raising it. Oh my, that's probably going to price some people out. I'm afraid. probably. Wow. Because you've got to have it all at once. Yes. Up yeah. front. So now, so you cook with your butane stove. Yes. And. You don't have a refrigerator? I have an um, ice chest. You so you use an ice chest, but yeah. no refrigerator. Yeah, and I tried uh, that blue thing down there on the bottom. is actually a refrigerator freezer, what but it just thing? takes too much oh, power. Oh, under here? Yeah, I, I okay. wrapped it in a tarp. I'm okay. going to try selling it at the, at the um, RTR. Okay. Um, it draws too much power. What kind is it? Um, Alpacool. Okay. So if anyone's looking for an Alpha Cool, um, Daryl will be selling one. <laughs> yes. Okay. All it's right. a it's a really small one. Okay. Um, but, but when you say takes too much power, so how much power do you have? I have a um, three hundred Rock Pals and a two fifty Rock Pals. The two fifty is strictly for my CPAP. Okay. So you so you really basically you have three hundred available. Yeah. Okay. And this yeah. was 300 was not keeping that going. Not for very long. It, now, drew, it drew about 35. Now, do you also need to use, let's go back here so we can really see you better because okay. it's, it's kind of dark in there. <laughs> so what made you decide in terms of doing this full time to do it full time? Well, I couldn't afford to do it part time because of the rent. I was in a um, over 55 low income apartment, mm -hmm. but they were studio apartment, but they were raising the rent 5% every year. And I felt like sooner or later, I'm going to get priced out. And so I'm not getting any younger. I, the nomad life sounded really neat. And so I said, now's the time. And so I did. When my lease was up, I didn't renew. and took off and here I am. <laughs> and again, how old are you? 72. 72. So how long do you plan to do this for? As long as I can. <laughs> oh, I really, really like it. Oh, okay. And now this vehicle that you have, what is this again? A uh, Subaru Forester 2008. Okay. And how many miles does it have on it? 119. I mean, yeah, 119,000. Okay. A lot and of that in my travels because traveling from Idaho to Arizona, back to Idaho, back to Arizona. It's a lot of times. It's seventeen hundred. <laughs> a lot of times you spend the summers in Idaho. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now I wanted to ask you this: as a solo senior female, do you have any concerns about being out on the road? No. And saying places like this, and in the, some of the other campgrounds I've been, they have they have camp hosts, mm -hmm. and so I feel safer in this environment. I didn't feel safe when I was boondocking um, near St. George, Utah. Right. Um, and why didn't you feel safe there? Well, I guess, well, partly I probably didn't pick a good site. Okay. But um, I, I didn't really know where to go there, and that was one place I had heard of. But there were, like, gravel trucks coming by all the time, and... Um, I don't know. I just didn't you feel... Just your, your, your intuition said this yeah. is not a good place. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Everyone knows, I think, who has been doing this for a while, that your best weapon out here is your intuition. Mm -hmm. And if you don't feel safe, or not even if you don't feel safe, you're just not comfortable, you don't know why, though, yeah. leave. Yeah. Just get up and leave. Yeah. And for, like, boondocking in a city, I would, I would be afraid, I think, in that situation, too. Okay. Um, I like it further out and um, like but you, this. But you like being out but around other people. Oh, definitely around other people. Okay. And I can Because, I mean, I was at near um, Yuma and um, I was I had gone there with someone else that ended up eventually leaving. And I had, I would fell, I was out walking across one of these washes and I fell and there was nobody. Mm. 
And so, and every time I put my hand down, the ground gave way because of all the little burrows underneath. Uh -huh. And so I had to scoot on my side up to a, where it was a hill and rocky. That must have been terrifying. So, um, yeah, I want people around. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have been doing this now since January. You say you're comfortable in here. Mm -hmm. And you have some really cool, <laughs> <laughs> some very cool gadgets that I'd like to show. Can you show that heater? I've never seen one like that. Yeah, this is a butane heater. It has a, what is it? Um, uh, it's the type of plate, the grill ceramic, there. yeah, grill thing here. Let's see how it works. How do okay. you work it? And then this just fits in that hole there on the on the back. And then you have basically you push it in and turn it just like you would with a butane stove. Yeah. It looks like. Yeah. And then you push in, turn on, and then it starts heating up. You can feel. Okay, and this gets hot, you said. Yes, that so you gets hot. you have to be careful of this, and the grill gets hot. Yeah. All right. That, that's ingenious. I've never seen something like that before. Oh, my goodness. I think I'm going to order one of those and try it out. That is very <laughs> cool. Now, there's something else you have. I want to know. <laughs> this is cracking me up. Uh, yeah. Now, this is in case. Let's get out here a little bit. <laughs> oh, I better take off the hat. <laughs> yeah, you guys are going to love this. this in is... case you have to stop along the road and use the bathroom. And nowadays with drones and stuff, you don't really want to <laughs> be out in the open. But this is a <laughs> shelter that sits on your head. <laughs> and do, do what you need to do. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It, I mean, you'd be sitting on a little stool, and so you'd be down like this. <laughs> It's called a pancake. So you had, and it even has, let me look at and show them again. It has a little thing for your head to fit in on top. Oh my goodness. And then it folds down really like, you know, those foldable um, shower tents. And it folds down very yeah. small. That is, that is cool. But I want to look at this tent again. It's a Kelty Backroads. I okay. believe it is Backcountry Backroads. Forget. And it has, I'm trying to see how easy or hard it is to set up and it looks it just has three rods is that correct yes two long ones and one short one and the long ones go side to side and the short one is in the middle the they cross okay and, and i'm going to look over here and get the exact because i know people there are going to be people who are going to be interested in this it's a kelty back road shelter for those that are interested and do you mind sharing how much it was? 186. 186. And then how does it secure onto your roof of your vehicle? I, I have it tied around right now, tied around here. Mm -hmm. But I'm um, going to get strong magnets to uh, hold it. The front one does have a magnet. Okay. Not a real strong one. but Let me go through here and look at the magnet that it's... Oh, oh okay, I see. See yeah, there. yeah. But you're going to try and, and find I, another way to, to, um, to secure it down. A stronger magnet. Okay. Right. <coughs> I think this is like a 75 pound. Okay. And so I ordered 100 pound, but I think I probably should have 300. Well, this is quite a setup, and you're yeah. going to be doing this, I guess. For several years in the foreseeable future is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So That's seven what I'm two, hoping for. Hopefully for the next several years. Yes. Another thing I wanted to show you. Oh, to show you something uh, specific um, about this model and older models of this okay. car. And that's no frame. Where do you put reflectix? Where do you put... Oh, okay. Bug screens. You don't uh -huh. have anything. Right. So that so, has been a problem. So what I've done about the bugs is those doors that you have that, I mean, screens that you have that have the magnets that close right. them. Uh -huh. I just use that on here. I cut it in half. Oh, and then okay. that's how I 
keep out the bugs. <laughs> All right, because you don't have a frame on here, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, well, that, that works, though. It works. So uh -huh. that's one thing out here. You need to be creative. <laughs> you do. You need to be creative. And you know what else? Don't you think you need to go with the flow, kind of? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, if something doesn't go exactly right and you can't handle that, you're going to constantly have a problem. Oh, yeah. My first um, night in the car was spending it sitting in the front seat at a truck stop in North Las Vegas <laughs> on New Year's Eve. Why was that? Um, I didn't know how long it was going to take me, and I was wanting to get through um, through Las Vegas. From I, I was I think I was coming from Salt Lake City, and I didn't have any idea of how long it was going to take me. And so it was already dark, and I can't see well enough to drive in the dark. So I had to pull off. <laughs> and you didn't have it set up for a bed, or um, I did, but I was at a truck stop, and so. Uh, and actually, at that point, I had stuffed a lot from my apartment in here okay. um, because I had to leave right away. It was stormy. I didn't have time to go to my storage unit, so I just stuffed it all in here. So, so I had no have, place. So you do have a storage unit with some stuff still or no? No. Um, I got rid of that in, in um, September. Okay. So you really Which are. Which is one less expense. <laughs> so you really are. You just have basically this is it. Yep. Yeah, right. what's here? This is it. All right. Well, you know what? You're managing, you're making it, and it sounds like you have a really good attitude about this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like it. All right. Well, Daryl, thank you very much, and I hope we'll catch up with you later in the season and see how things are going with you and okay. your first year on the road and coming to <laughs> yeah, a yeah. conclusion very soon. But yeah. But yeah. you still have a great attitude about it. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it's doable. It's would you do the same thing again? Would you leave the apartment and do this? Or would you have stayed if now that no, you've been... No, I wouldn't have stayed. Okay. There's so much more, um, like, stimulation out here, meeting people and stuff. Okay. You, your mind doesn't go... <laughs> I mean, you can sit in an apartment all day and not interact with anyone. You can. You really and can. so yeah. out here, you're kind of forced to interact. Okay. But, um, you know, in enjoyable ways. I mean, exactly. I know my na neighbors on three sides. Right, and I know I know your one neighbor and is a very lo lovely lady. I haven't met the others, but yeah, you're right. You, and, yeah. if you, you know, and if you ended up somewhere you didn't like your neighbors, you just moved to another different yeah. spot. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I've done that too. Okay. Where okay. I didn't feel safe with a neighbor that okay. told me I shouldn't be doing something at night, and I go, he's watching me. Okay. <laughs> so I packed yeah. up and moved out. Okay. Well, Daryl, thank you so much again. And again, we will try and catch up with you maybe before the end of the season if we can and okay. see how things are going and wish you safe travels. And we will see you down the road. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.